What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another Transfer Daily video for you guys today. I say Transfer Daily, I don't think I did a video yesterday, but I'll be real, that just is what it is with Transfer content. There's going to be those days where there's barely any sort of news, where there's going to be such little news, I don't even think it's worth making a video, because I don't want to sit there and waffle in front of you guys, because you guys are just going to be bored of it and click off in like a minute. So, welcome back to another Transfer video for you guys today. Today we're going to be speaking about the obvious news, but before I start that... Don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever I release any new content. And yeah, let's go straight into big news. And I don't know whether to be sad, I don't know whether to celebrate, but the news that we have been anticipating for a couple weeks, couple months, has now finally happened. Arsenal have now signed Willian on a 150k a week three-year contract with a potential option for a fourth. And the first thing I'm going to say is forget the London rivalry. No one as Chelsea fans can really be that angry at William for taking a deal like that because that's the sort of deal that he wanted us to give them. And personally, he was never going to be worth that for three years, 150k a week. He want a potential option for a fourth. I'll be real, this guy has full-on finessed Arsenal. And this is why I call him the biggest hustler of his generation for a reason. This guy, man, has stolen 150k a week and will be earning that at 35 years of age. That is brilliant. And for William, fair play. Fair play because you finessed a big club like that. So, so congratulations for that. He's had up, he's had options from other clubs in the MLS in Europe, but he wanted to stay in London. It's where he's built a life for himself and his family. He also has that restaurant with David Luiz as well, and that's going to be a key part of his mind as well because that's an other business venture for him too. Once he starts to wind down his career and retire, I mean, he's already done that going to the Arsenal retirement home, but he is at that point where he's winding down his career, so he wants to focus on other ventures. So he'll want to stay close to home and stay close to his other business ventures as well so it made sense that he was going to stay in london they also made up made sense for us to get rid of william and to part ways if this was the sort of contract he was trying to get from us imagine that another three years this could have gone anywhere if he just took the two years but he wanted three years because he wanted some more security so you know what fair play for both for both parties it was the better decision and me personally We've been trying to push this for a while. I think we we known William ha should have been leaving a couple years ago, and in my opinion, I think 2018 was the best year to do it. 2018, he'd felt he'd fell out with Conte. I think Barcelona were interested in for a 55 million pound deal, including Arta. And to be fair, William was shamelessly twerking for them on Instagram. If you saw, he was liking bare Barcelona posts during the summer. You saw that thing with Conte as well, the three trophies over his head after winning the FA Cup. It didn't look like it was going all that well for him. I think Manchester United were interested in him as well because Jose Mourinho and it is what it is. But I think that's when that was the best point for us to cut ties with him. I think his 17-18 season was a very poor start, but... He came into his own around the Barcelona game and then he started having a great run of form around the United City games as well. The Leicester City away performance in the FA Cup semi quarterfinals as well, if I remember correctly. But then he fell off at the, at the end of that season as well. And it, it's just Willian, in it? Willian, you know what, well, you do know what you can get out of him, which is why it gets so frustrating because he doesn't show it on a daily basis. He's a solid free kick taker. He's great at tracking back. His best asset by a mile is that he's a ball carrier. He offers he offers experience and that's one of the reasons why Arteta's pushed to sign him so much because he offers title winning experience and he wants to build that winning mentality around Arsenal. Good luck, but it is what it is. And he also rarely gets injured, which is another key asset to his play. Uh, but on the other hand, lacks consistency, completely freezes once he gets into the final third and gets these deer in the headlights flashbacks and just completely slows down the play. He can't take a corner to save his damn life and when he gets to the final third, it's predictable as hell. So, I will be real, William, I will miss him a little bit only because I've seen him in the Chelsea shirt for so long and because he's provided such amazing memories for us as well. We've spoken in previous videos, Everton 14-15, um, him carrying us in the first half of the 15-16 season. All those goals against Tottenham, the double at Wembley in the semi-final, the double this season at White Hart Lane, the first time we ever went to that new toilet bowl 
Well, and there's a couple of other memories that aren't really in my head right now as well as you guys need to allow me. I've literally just woken up. But William in seven years has created amazing memories for himself and amazing memories for the fans to remember him by. And like I said, these fans, we're not going to turn on William just because he went to Arsenal. We didn't turn on it when it was Petr Cech. The only reason why fans were booing David Luiz was because he pushed himself out of the club because he was our fourth choice centre-back because Lampard wanted to focus more on the youth when he was talking about wanting to be the more experienced leader to those centre-backs. It just didn't really add up. But even in the case of David Luiz, when David Luiz leaves Arsenal, I think people are just going to forget about all the stuff that happened with him and the way he left because David Luiz is another player who's left amazing memories in this club. All those bangers. I remember Basel in the semi-final when I was first starting to go to games on my own by myself. That was an amazing season. Him playing in the Champions League final the full 120 minutes through um, a, re a previous injury a couple games before that as well. Even coming back, he's had a couple goals for us this season. The second goal against Manchester City in his last season for us. That goal against Liverpool at Anfield. No one's going to hate David Luiz. He's got about seven years, maybe more years of, it, of time at Chelsea. So he's a cult hero as it gets. But Willian is off to the Arsenal retirement home and the saying stays clear. Players go from Arsenal to Chelsea in order to further their careers and players go from Chelsea to Arsenal in order to keep their family in London, stay comfortable, have a nice little paycheck and enjoy playing football with a little drop in mentality so you can be a bit more comfortable in your game. So this is perfect for Willian because Willian can just be comfortable, he can have his inconsistent one good game in five or ten and they probably won't even care because Arsenal are 8th place right now. They're slowly declining as a club. Arteta, I think, is a great manager and he will leave Arsenal in a better place than they were before. But I still don't think he is going to be at the point... I still don't think he's going to leave Arsenal as title contenders. He's not going to take Arsenal anywhere special. I don't think Arteta has the resources for it. And this is a plain example of it as well. When you guys are trying to create your signings so you can pro progress yourself up the Premier League table in a long-term projectivity. And you guys sign a third two year old winger like what it goes against any everything Mikel Arteta is trying to push for but it's like you guys say when Arsenal knock it's a different kind of knock to other clubs although if it's a big if it's a bigger or a better player than William they probably slam the door straight in your face uh, let's go straight into the final other piece of news before I wrap off this video Fabrizio Romano confirms we are in the hunt for a new goalkeeper and he said that Chelsea will not be looking to spend the 120 million release clause on Jan or Black after signing Kai Havertz. Kind of makes sense realistically. I do feel like Atletico need the money and we could really push for this sort of this sort of deal. But we also need to really we need to know that money doesn't grow on trees. We've already spent a lot on Ziyech, we spent a lot on Werner. Got them a little bit on the cheap, but we still still spend a decent amount for them. Kai Havertz is also gonna cost a lot as well. That'll probably take us to in between 150 to 200 million spent for the season already. And now if we're gonna add it to 250 million and we still need a left back and a centre back on top, it doesn't make sense. So I kind of get that. There are goalkeepers that like Onana and Pope who are still on the target list for Frank Lampard who are much cheaper options but Matt Laws also said that Chelsea will look to spend in the order of a left back first centre back no goalkeeper next and then a centre back so our first option is going to be a left back and we're probably going to be looking at Ben Chilwell still unless it's too expensive and then maybe we'll look at Tagliafico or Alex Tellez or many other left back options centre back we do need to sell in order to buy for both them and left back as well so we know that Emerson is probably going to be the left back to go for uh, one of the left backs to come in when it comes to center backs Kurt Zuma looks like it's a player most likely to be sold to raise funds And that's because Kurt Zuma has been the player with the most op with the most offers so far I get selling to buy but I also get improving the depth of our squad and I think Zuma is better than Christensen and Rudiger right now Rudiger maybe because of his injury record might not go for as much cash But he'd be the player that I sell them sell the quickest because even if he offers experience, not much because he came back from injury and he didn't really change much. Christensen, I still think there's room to grow with him, but it's getting very, very late in the time for him now. He needs to start making a name for himself quickly. We need to see 17, 18 Christensen back. Pre-Barcelona, not post as well because pre-Barcelona, one of the best centre-backs in the league. 
but I don't think we should get rid of Zuma anyway. But as the end of this transfer daily video, which is basically laughing at you, Guna bastards, watching this video because you lot signed Willian and you're trying to hype it up to us. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know whether you agree or disagree with any of the comments I've said. Don't forget to smash that subscribe. Uh, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and get rid of all that red from this channel. And I will see you guys very very soon. Check out United Central at 6 p.m. as well because I'll be doing a video of Saeed there as well. I'll I'll probably be talking more about William to us or be having a laugh because me and Saeed bounce off each other well so check that out and I'll see you guys very very soon up the Chelsea